the year live from the University of Alabama. A trimmed down field of candidates took the stage at the fourth and final Republican presidential debate. All four sit behind frontrunner Donald Trump, whose lead is such that he hasn't even bothered to take the stage. Each are hoping to stand out to voters as primaries start next month. Here are tonight's winners and losers. Of the candidates on the stage, Governor Ron DeSantis came out the best, with a performance that stayed relatively above the fray and seemed to connect with Alabama audience. One example is when DeSantis shouted on the topic of gender transition surgeries. Do not have the right to abuse your kids. This is cutting off their genitals. This is mutilating these minors. DeSantis took a bite out of Trump when asked about the dictator talk circulating Washington. Uh, the media is making a big deal about what he said about some of these comments. I would just remind people uh, that is not how he governed. He didn't even fire Dr. Fauci. He didn't fire Christopher Wray. He didn't clean up the swamp. He said he was going to drain it. He did not drain it. Chris Christie plans to go out swinging. The former New Jersey governor was almost written off due to not speaking for the first 17 minutes. Hey, former governor of New this Jersey cracks me up because that I, I'm usually not somebody who gets missed, but okay, let's and go. What's happening? But delivered a biting performance that at times got the better of all of his opponents. If you want to disagree on issues, that's fine. And Nikki and I disagree on some issues. But I'll tell you this, I've known her for 12 years, which is longer than he's even started to vote in a Republican primary. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's unlikely to change his standing in the race, as Christie is polling at just 2.5% and was lucky to make the stage at all. Also a winner is the trio of female moderators who kept the conversation moving forward and were reasonably successful in keeping the candidates from talking too long or talking over each other. No, I'll take that. Nobody can hear this. No one can hear you. They can't hear you. You finish and then you get it back. All right. Former Fox News host Megyn Kelly started the debate with aggressive questions that poked at candidates' weaknesses. The moderators also brought Trump up in several questions, as the candidates on stage seemed much more willing to attack each other than go after the Donald. They're afraid to offend. And See, let I me wanna, tell you I something, wanna, if, you're afraid, on, if you're afraid to offend Donald Trump. Nikki Haley was the big winner of the first three debates, as her national polling numbers nearly tripled, but that status also drew attention. Ramaswamy and DeSantis both came out attacking her from almost the minute the debate started. And I love all the attention, fellas. Thank you for that. <laughs> Unfortunately for Haley, she was not quite the aggressor and did not quite have the zingers ready as she did previously. In fact, she ended up being defended multiple times on stage by Christie. This is a smart, accomplished woman, and you should stop insulting so her. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take several times over. Haley's biggest standout moment came when she refused to respond to a charge of corruption from Ramaswamy. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. Haley, would you like to respond? No. It's not worth my time to respond to him. You, you have been using... A as he did in previous debates, Ramaswamy lugged his opponents, but ended up largely getting batted around by his competitors. This is the fourth debate, the fourth debate that you would be voted in the first 20 minutes as the most obnoxious blowhard in America. So shut up for a while. Focus on character likely distracted from whatever case Ramaswamy would like to make for president. But the biggest loser of all may be Republican primary voters who are looking for a strong alternative to Trump. The indicted former president is polling above 60% nationally and enjoys huge leads in each of the early primary states. None of the candidates on stage likely stood out enough to make a dent in that support, leaving him the runaway frontrunner going into 2024.